SpaceX says that during a test fire, the launcher for its upcoming Starship trip went through its base as well, but the real launch might not happen for a few weeks. Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. Today we'll tell you all about the new SpaceX Stage Zero that's been upgraded after 33 engine static fire. Let's get started! The Starship first stage prototype, also called Booster 9, had its second static fire test at SpaceX Starbase in South Texas. During this test, the Starship's Raptor engines were briefly lit on fire. This test is called a static fire. During the video of the test, SpaceX officials said that the engines burned for about 6 seconds, which was exactly as expected. This kind of test was done on Booster 9 for the second time. The first time was on August 6, when the huge vehicle lit up 29 of its 33 Raptors during a standing fire. At this point, all 33 of them have been set on fire. This steady fire from the Super Heavy Booster 9 was able to light all 33 Raptor engines, and all of them, except for two, ran for the whole mission. I'd like to send everyone on the SpaceX team my best wishes for hitting this important milestone. A tweet posted on SpaceX on X, which used to be called Twitter, says that the two static burns are part of the plans for the second test flight of a fully stacked Starship. On that trip, Booster 9 and Ship 25, a prototype of an upper stage, will be put through their paces. Starship had its first test launch on April 20th this year. The goal was to send an upper stage into partial orbit around the Earth and aim for it to splash down in the Pacific Ocean near Hawaii. But this didn't happen. The rocket's two stages didn't separate like they were supposed to, so SpaceX sent an order for the vehicle to destroy itself. This caused Starship to be destroyed high above the Gulf of Mexico. Elon Musk, the founder and CEO of SpaceX, said that the design of the Starship has changed more than a thousand times since its first flight, which was a test flight. For example, the company switched to a strategy called hot staging, which means that the Starship's upper stage will now start firing its six Raptor engines before it fully separates from the Super Heavy booster. SpaceX had to add a venting device and a heat shield to the top of Booster 9 in the time between the first and second static fires so that this change could be made. A water deluge system was also built by the company under Starbase's orbital launch mount. This was done to protect the launch pad from the damage caused by the April 20th launch. Musk wants Booster 9 and Ship 25 to take off as soon as possible, but he doesn't have full control over the launch schedule. It looks like the FAA, which is in charge of issuing launch licenses in the United States, is looking over the accident report that SpaceX sent in after the first launch. Around 1.35 p.m. Eastern Time on August 25th, SpaceX did a static fire test at its Starbase test site in Boca Chica, Texas, using the Raptor engines that were put in the Super Heavy rocket that was called Rocket 9. SpaceX said it had done a full duration fire, which appeared to last between 5 and 6 seconds. Later, SpaceX said that all 33 engines started correctly, even though two of them turned off too soon. The company didn't say if that performance was good enough to try to launch, but it was better than a test of the same booster on August 6. This test was over before it was supposed to be because four of the Raptors shut down before they were supposed to after running for less than three seconds. If SpaceX is happy with how the test went, it will likely be one of the last technical tests before the company is ready for a second launch of Starship and Super Heavy that work together. The first try on April 20th failed four minutes after liftoff because several Raptor engines in the Super Heavy rocket stopped working. After that, the spaceship got out of control and fell. SpaceX will still need to get approval for a launch from the Federal Aviation Administration. This will mean making changes to its original Starship Super Heavy launch license. Early this month, SpaceX sent the FAA a report about the failure on April 20th, but the agency still needs to accept it and decide if SpaceX has made the necessary changes before it can give SpaceX a new license. Even though the FAA hasn't said how long this process will take, people in the business say it could take a few weeks. After the launch in April, the company has already made a lot of changes to the vehicle and the pad. The pad now has a water deluge system to avoid damage from the Raptor plume, which sent sand and debris as far as 10 kilometers from the launch site. Because the engines weren't fired at full power during the recent tests, the overflow system won't be fully proven to work until the rocket is launched. Now, the booster has a ring between the stages with vents on top. This is so that SpaceX CEO Elon Musk's hot staging plan can be used. In this plan, the engines of the Starship upper stage are turned on while it's still connected to the Super Heavy booster. He says that doing this can improve the speed of the car by up to 
Musk said in June that the company had made well over a thousand more changes to the car, which gave him more faith in the success of the upcoming launch. I think the next flight has a much better chance of getting to orbit than the last one, perhaps 60% was his guess. For this week's 33 engine ground test, the Starship spacecraft, which is part upper stage and part in space transporter, will not be attached to the top of the Super Heavy rocket. A few minutes after liftoff, the Starship separates from the Super Heavy rocket. It then uses six Raptor engines to move itself into orbit. The booster stands on its own at 226 feet or 69 meters, which is about the same height as SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket when it's fully built. The big, shiny stainless steel rocket that SpaceX is building with money from private investors will be the most powerful one ever to take to the skies. NASA's Saturn V moon rocket and the Space Launch System, which became the most powerful rocket in flight when it took off on the Artemis I lunar test flight in November, will have more than four times as much power after the blast from the first stage's 33 main engines. And unlike SpaceX's partially reusable Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets, which need brand new upper stages for each mission, both stages of the Starship launch vehicle are expected to be fully reusable. Last year, the Falcon rocket flew a record 61 times. This year, SpaceX wants to launch 100 Falcon rockets. SpaceX plans to catch the Super Heavy rocket with chopstick arms that can move on the launch tower. The Starship's engines will also be used to come back through the atmosphere and land on Earth, as well as to get to the surface of the Moon, or Mars. On the first Starship orbital test flight, there will be no efforts to recover and use the ship again. According to SpaceX's website, SpaceX Starship spacecraft and Super Heavy rocket, which together are called Starship, are a fully reusable transportation system designed to take both people and cargo to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Starship will be the most powerful launch vehicle ever made in the history of the world. It will be able to send up to 150 metric tons of reusable cargo to Earth orbit and up to 250 metric tons of non-reusable cargo. Musk has said that SpaceX wants to test out the Starship program at the Texas Starbase project. The company is building a second Starbase launch pad at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. In the future, it hopes to build more launch sites, which would let it send out multiple Starship trips every day. With rapid reuse, SpaceX wants to cut costs and give users access to space that no one else can match. That's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and comment down with your thoughts on this, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching this video.